Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Diatone R249 Plus. Now there's two R249s. There's a 2.5 inch and there's a 2 inch. This one is the 2.5 inch and 2.5 inch I find is the best micro flying uh, quadcopters for outdoors basically. Once you go below 2.5 inch it becomes very difficult to make a really nice flying micro uh, for outdoors. So the 2. Point, this is the reason why I also went for the 2.5 here because I know how 2.5 flies and it's actually my favorite micro class of quadcopters here. Three inches is a different level because you can go with bigger motors, but I like the Micro 11XX motors. These are really nice flyers if it is executed correctly. Now let's talk about some of the components before we get into the flight characteristics and how how the overall execution was from the tuning down to its performance. Now some of the specs here are 11XX motors, which is 1105 motors here, and they seem to be bigger than the other 11 you know, class sized motors in my opinion. For camera, they're using a premium setup. They're using the Runcam Micro Swift with also a Runcam TX200 VTX, which is connected right in the back of the camera here. So it's really nice. Uh, this way it keeps a lot of room for you in the stack. If you wanted to add something extra, you can totally do that. And the VTX antenna was mounted through this hole, but on the bottom, what I did was, if you can tell, they do give you zip ties. So you're not gonna have to go purchase any zip ties here. I routed a zip tie through that hole and then I brought the antenna next to it and I just put a heat shrink to hold that into place here. And on the back here, you have to bring your own receiver. It doesn't come with a receiver. However, they have the wires already routed for you for S bus. If you're using I bus, it won't work. So make sure you find out where to put the I bus. So I use the R9MM receiver, which is the 900 megahertz uh, receiver for FR Sky, the mini one. It's in there on the bottom, right out the top here. So you do have plenty of room to add a little receiver here. So that's really nice right out of the box. And they also give you this plastic case here or plastic top cover for the stack to keep it, uh, to keep your flight controller safe from, from short circuits and as well as safe from kind of an impact that could pop a component off of the flight control. So that's something that's really well thought out. It's not 3D printed, it's actually injection molded plastic here. So now, if you also take a look at the ESC, now the ESC and the flight controller basically, they're using the Mamba mini stack and I've tested that, noise tested that, and that tested absolutely phenomenal. The amount of filtration it has on board for a 20 by 20 stack is remarkable. You can get away with using larger motors, possibly 2205 motors, on this stack. So for it to handle 11XX motors is just going to be, it's just going to perform flawlessly in terms of electrical noise. Now, if you also take a look in the back right there, we also have a capacitor right onto the ESC, which is a really nice addition. It's a huge plus here. So now saying that they've added a lot of great hardware here, but the only issue with it is the tune out of the box isn't so great. It's still flyable. And all of my flight footage were based on the default tune that it came with, you will need to somewhat tune it slightly. However, Diatone has been giving out new tunes for its quadcopters. I don't know if they have actually been installing them on their latest versions before shipping them out, but I'll keep that. I'll keep you guys updated down in the comment section. I'll probably pin a comment once I get a reply back. Let's talk about the VTX and this line that I had in my video feed. Now, I did have this static line in my video feed. It has nothing to do with the overall quadcopter, but what it had to do was with my 900 megahertz receiver here. This was causing interference with my VTX. So the further I pushed the antennas back and the further I pushed the VTX forward, it would get less and less. So when you see that in the footage, in the DVR footage, it is not from the VTX or the quadcopter itself. It's because I put a 900 megahertz receiver here because I really wanted to test these R9MMs and that's what you see back here. Now for props, we're using 2540 props, which is a 2.5 inch prop with 40 millimeter pitch or yeah, 40 millimeter pitch, which is a really, really steep pitch and something that can give you a lot of speed, especially on a 3S because I only flew this on a 3S. Now I'd recommend if you're possibly going to fly on a 4S uh, to probably get something with a little bit less pitch, but you can still totally get away with it. But I I have not tested that so I can't really say anything to that but this thing can run a 4S. Everything on here should be directly compatible with a 4S and you should not have the risk of burning or ruining anything on this micro quadcopter. So some of the things they do provide you with here are just a bunch of extra zip ties. They also give you an extra battery strap, anti-slip pads and you know they give you all these extra things even a bunch of extra hardware screws and stuff 
But the only most important thing that I would have loved to see more of were propellers because they only give you one set of these gem fans. Now let's talk about his performance. Now it's performance for a 2.5 inch. I, I love this class so much. Most of the quadcopters I fly or micros that I like to fly are 2.5 inch. In terms of speed out of 10, I would give this around an eight. I've seen faster and I've seen a lot slower. So it gets an eight for speed. Now this was on a 3S. Again, I'm talking only about 3S, 3S LiPo here. For efficiency, it's pretty efficient. You can get two minutes to three minutes of flight time on a 550 milliamp 3S, which is what I like to see here. I wish it could get a little bit more, but it's possibly, but I was flying it very aggressively and that is something to be expected. That's really good because I've seen some micros where you're flying basically one minute fighting to keep it in the air and it's just not staying in the air. However, it's not the case with this one. You can enjoy it. So in that perspective, it's really good. So we can say it is efficient. Uh, in terms of durability, I didn't have many crashes. I did have some crashes. Um, I, I would give it currently a seven or an eight because I don't know because plus the props here, they're just, uh, you just, just need more props basically. So I'd want a little bit more uh, durable props I think would be a little bit better because usually with micros once you crash once you get oscillations and it's due to the prop and even though if they all look perfect one of them is slightly screwed up and it's just affecting the whole performance of the quadcopter so take that into consideration once you crash and you get oscillations just switch out your props and uh, if you can't figure out which one then you might as well just switch out all of them and just keep these for you know a rainy day when you run out of props so in terms of build quality it is really nicely built here uh, it does seem to be well protected. The plastic seems to be pretty strong. It does have some flex, so that'll allow it to soak up some of the uh, crash without actually breaking. And as you can tell, they even provided these little extra flaps here to protect your camera from impacts. So that is a really nice extra addition, which they didn't have to do, but it was a really well thought out design here. So that's what I'm trying to say here. Also, if you take a look at the plastic here, it is slightly protruding out a little bit more than the carbon fiber. So if you were to have a head-on collision, you're more likely to break the plastic than the frame, which is really nice because then you can just go ahead and pick up another one of these plastic pieces, stick it back on, and you're still good to go. And again, well, that's all I can currently say, guys. It flew really great. It was, I give it an 8 out of 10 for uh, the, this type of class of micro quadcopters, a 2.5 inch. I did enjoy it outside. I didn't have slight wind, but it still, it was totally flyable. And that is something I look for in 2.5 inch. So overall, it's a really good one. If you're thinking of getting it, get it. Why not? There's nothing wrong with it. However, just take note of the uh, default tune, which will be need. You will need to slightly tune that thing uh, somewhat. And um, I'm gonna leave you guys with the footage. The footage is without me tuning it. Just the default tune, exactly how you see it right here out of the box. And again, that line in the VTX feed. Ignore it. That's because of the R9 900 megahertz receiver that I have in there. It was just uh, interfering with the 5.8 gigahertz on my VTX because it's just so close to the VTX right there. The MMCX, the, the IPEX port, as well as the flight controller. But more likely it was because of the VTX right here was so close to it. So yeah, that that's all there was. But other than that, there was really no noise in the video feed, which is really nice. And well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll leave you guys with the flight footage, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.